Hello everyone, welcome to the Ichimoku.co daily stock market review for the trading day ending Monday June 29th. Firstly to the S&P 500 and here we've seen very very strong uh, selling coming into uh, US equity markets today or world equity markets actually. If we look at this uh, current candle closely it's a very very large black body candle, uh, an extreme candle and uh, the sellers have shown very strong commitment. They've been in control for uh, the entire day uh, from the open. Importantly, the market where it previously found support at the round number 2100, uh, we opened down below there, never uh, even tested anywhere near there, selling off uh, through the Ichimoku cloud. That is a very important close down below the Ichimoku cloud, uh, strong bearish close, and it suggests that we certainly could see uh, further downside in this market. The thing to watch here is that this is an extreme day. And very often when we have extreme days, we tend to not see a strong follow-through. Uh, I'm suggesting uh, that if we do see follow-through, we should be watching very closely at this 2040 level. And I'll just zoom out. And we have this very big zone of uh, previous support and resistance that's held as an important level in the recent past for this market and extends from uh, the top here at 2079 and we can see the last three occasions, four occasions that we tested there we saw buying coming in. So this bearish close down below there does suggest that uh, there has been a very significant change in sentiment in the market in this uh, medium to short term time frame. What we'll be looking for is the bottom of the zone at this 2040 level to hold and for the buyers to come in as we saw here previously. Now if we see uh, the sellers break out down below there we certainly could see significantly lower levels in uh, the S&P 500. Now just looking to the last time that we saw the market breach down below the Ichimoku cloud, we saw uh, a strong bearish close, we breached uh, another previous important zone of support and then we saw strong follow through following that. So uh, that's what we'll be looking for for the next day's trading. We then eventually saw the market trade significantly lower to find support down very close to the 1800 level, actually taking out uh, the round number 2000 and some very important uh, support levels. So if we do breach down through this level and we see that strong follow through, we could see the market testing uh, down uh, much lower. If we do see uh, indecision enter the market, then there's an opportunity for the buyers to come in and uh, perhaps retrace it. And we should be then watching the top of this highlighted zone, this previous support level around 2079, 2080 roughly to uh, uh, potentially hold as resistance. Now if uh, the market does breach down through 2040, important support around the round number 2000 and uh, any breach down through there in a solid bearish manner uh, certainly could see the S&P 500 trading significantly lower. Now moving next to uh, now moving next to the Nasdaq 100 and uh, here we see uh, selling in this market as well a uh, fairly large black body candle but certainly not as large as the S&P 500 so the amount of net momentum here that the sellers have created is significantly less than uh, with the S&P 500 this suggests that uh, it's not as extreme a day as with the S&P and we certainly could see this market trade lower um, I also suggest that if we do see this market trade lower, we're probably going to see the S&P 500 trade lower as well. Uh, but with this market as well, we've seen the sellers uh, take control. We saw a window opened up and uh, that window may provide very strong resistance uh, for the NASDAQ 100 if we do see any uh, rally. But looking at this candle, we see a larger shadow on the top and the market tested outside of the Ichimoku cloud and was strongly rejected from there. So uh, that could be very, very important that the uh, we saw that rejection from, uh, from that area and it should continue to hold as strong resistance. Um, we are now now trading within a highlighted zone of uh, previous resistance and support. The, the support extends down to 43.47. So that's going to be the big test for this market for the NASDAQ 100. How is the market going to fare around that 43.47? We should react off that level. If we st see strong selling coming in there, we could trade uh, down to around the 42.60 level or even perhaps beyond. So that's the next big level following the 43.47, 42.60. 
And just looking at the Russell 2000, and uh, this was the market that was faring uh, much better in the lead up to uh, um, this strong selling that we've seen uh, for today. And uh, we saw this market establishing new major highs, trading up above each of the Chimeco indicators. Well, today, none of those indicators have helped as. Uh, found uh, offered uh, themselves as support. We haven't tested to the Ichimoku cloud yet, uh, but the uh, Kijunsen and Tenkensen, which had been uh, previously f uh, an area of very strong support for the market, were totally blown away in a very, very important manner. Sellers in control, something of a, an extreme day, and if we look here to the previous extreme day, we then had formation of a, an indecisive candle in the market rallying. So we're we'll watching how the market reacts for the next day. Now, uh, trading down just below the market is the Ichimoku cloud and it's very thin, so it's not going to take much selling to breach that area. Um, we do have uh, some previous important support at 12.43 and then down at the 12.33 level that has been a previous uh, uh, swing low uh, that we should be watching very closely for potential support. Interestingly, if we look at the shadow on the top of this candle, the market tested up to the uh, um, tank and send indicator and was strongly rejected from there. And uh, the very solid close down below each of these indicators certainly does suggest that the sellers have very, very tight control of this market. But as with the S&P 500, look at the range of this market, the size of the black body, it is an extreme day and we don't tend to see strong follow through after these extreme days we then tend to see the market uh, become a little indecisive we don't necessarily see an automatic uh, retracement um, but the thing is when we have um, some of these very important major selling days um, that's when we could see strong follow through so we can't preempt the market we have to react to the market and how it uh, tests around uh, this level here 1243 and just around the bottom of the Ichimoku cloud at 1241 now, just to have a look at where we've seen um, th the uh, capital flow to away from the equities markets and uh, just firstly taking a look at VEU, which is the Vanguard FTSE All World Equities Index. And uh, so, and this is without the US. So we're comparing external US markets, those markets that are external to US, to the US equities markets. And here we see uh, a gap down. A uh, window has been opened up. Uh, the market previously finding some support around the uh, bottom of the uh, Ichimoku cloud. And today uh, we've seen that taken out. And it's the first significant breakdown below there since February last year. Or February early, early this year, sorry. Uh, this is a very strong, important close down below the 49.18 level of previous support. And uh, with the sellers taking strong control, this does suggest that there is a good possibility of the market testing perhaps down to this previous swing high around $48 or even down to uh, the lows here around uh, 47 or down to uh, around 46.87. The important thing here, however, is the relative strength to the S&P 500, to the US equities market. And where we saw some improvement uh, with uh, this market starting to out-trade over the, uh, towards the end of last week, um, uh, we saw flow of capital uh, away from US equities markets for a couple of days into um, external markets. For today, we've seen a flow out of those external markets. So this is not a market that we perhaps should be looking at allocating to, perhaps allocating away from, with the relative strength closing down below that uh, one standard deviation uh, channel. But on a uh, the very small time scale that we're looking at, and here with uh, uh, the uh, US 20 plus year bond ETF, TLT is the code, and here we see some buying coming in. So obviously there's been a flow of capital away from the US equities markets into the uh, into the uh, US bond market. And uh, we have seen uh, this market test up through the Tenkatsen indicator, buyers in control, but still no change of trend in a longer term time frame. So we've had a flow into the markets in a short term time frame, breaching the Tenkatsen, but the Kijunsen here is going to be important resistance at 119.31 and we can see in the recent past that, that that has held as resistance. So it will be important if we see a bullish close above there, we then could see uh, further appreciation of the US uh, bond markets. In terms of relative strength, 
outperforming the US equities markets here by trading up above that upper band. Um, um, momentum coming into that relative strength as well, trading up through the upper band here as well. So we certainly are seeing a, a flow from US equities into the bonds. But as we saw in, in the weekly charts that we looked at when we were looking at this um, bond fund, um, we saw strong underperformance on a longer term basis. Um, and we were looking at the potential support around the Ichimoku cloud. So we've seen that now, the market bouncing off the bottom of that Ichimoku cloud. And if you recall, um, I suggested that there was potential for resistance if the market did trade up to the top of the cloud. So the price appreciation here and the flow away from um, US equities into uh, US bonds may be short lived and uh, obviously a lot depends on, on world events but we certainly are see some, seeing something of a flow but it's not terribly significant on a longer term basis yet. Now the important thing here however is that where we were strongly underperforming the US equities here by trading down below that lower band we have seen the um, relative strength uh, move back to within the bands so it's certainly the underperformance is not as strong as it was previously and that reflects this short term uptrend in the TLT ETF. The other area that we have seen a flow to has been gold and GLD is the ETF here and we're comparing that to the US equities market here on the uh, first sub chart and um, where we saw no strong underperformance or outperformance uh, we've seen uh, uh, very little uh, strength here in this market uh, in either direction uh, or very little weakness um, but for today we have seen the relative strength close uh, significantly up above the upper band compared to some of these other breakouts and it does suggest that there may have been a flow into gold away from US equities. Now um, we can see on the chart, the uh, in the above uh, chart, the first chart here, the Jamaica chart, um, a change of trend in the first term time frame but the uh, issue here is going to be the strong resistance around 113.85 uh, with the Kijinsen and Tenkinsen trading around that area and we may find in the next day or two that we're going to see uh, that resistance hold and then some selling come back in and then perhaps a flow back into US equities. Just looking at the weekly chart here and uh, very uh, uh, moderate price action here over the last uh, couple of months. The market basically moving sideways, finding resistance around the Kitchen Center at 117.62, potential for resistance at the Tanker Center around 114.70, and then up to the Ichimoku Cloud about 116.75. In terms of relative strength, no real major significant performance here in that longer term time frame. And then looking at the uh, Vanguard REIT ETF, VNQ is the code, it's the real estate uh, index and we're looking at this asset class comparing it to US equities and here we see uh, strong selling in this uh, in this market. Um, trading down below each of the Jamaica indicators supported by the Chicka Span and the relative strength comparative is still strongly underperforming US equities. So here we've seen the flow not into uh, real estate away from US equities, we've seen the flow of capital on a very short term basis uh, into gold somewhat uh, but more so into the bonds and there is a question uh, as to whether that flow is going to continue over the next few days.